heading to our next call here and it's a reaching cooler and an ice machine issue so we're going in there see what's going on i don't believe we've ever been there before so let's go take a look at it and see what we got going on guys if you like the video and you want to see more like it make sure you hit the like button don't forget to subscribe let's go get started and see what we find all right so we got this little prep table here it doesn't run at all got another prep table back here that's running but has a leak and we've got an ice machine here that's not uh, doing so well that basically leaks water everywhere so those are some of the things that we're getting started on that's always a good sign these are some of the worst ones oh yeah oh it's flat completely empty nothing zero milch nothing let's uh, plug it in and see if we even get uh, the compressor to run the compressor works all right we're gonna put a little trace gas in this thing see how bad of a leak it is and then uh Chances are we'll focus on the other coolers first. That way we ain't wasting a bunch of time on this one. This isn't the one he normally uses. This holds about 11 ounces of 34 in it. I'm not even gonna worry about vacuum and all that stuff right now because I have no doubt there's a pretty good size leak on this thing. We can always pull a vacuum, replace the filter dryer, all that stuff once we decide they want to fix it. Right now it's kind of a waste. You got a junk uh, saddle tap on there and I guarantee you it's probably leaking in the evaporator. So we're just going to throw some uh, juice in there and see what we get. Looks like there's several leaks. I'm going to let's go into the parts for million mode right here and see if we can find out where everything's at. Okay, that's not looking good from 68. So see how it's going down there in a minute off to the right. It's gonna get stronger again because I think it's looking on these fittings right here. Come back over to the center more. That's for sure in the coil. Oh yeah, look at that. Somewhere right in here. Alright, well this one's junk. We need a new evaporator. We're gonna do it. Might as well get him a new thermostat because this has already been wanker jank. Somebody obviously didn't know how that worked, or whatever. You can just tell it's screwed up. That's all whacked out. And then we're leaking all up in here. So even if I fix this stuff here, it's still in the coil. And you can see the green stuff there. Yeah, it's screwed. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and note this on there that it's today's date. The accumulator evaporator cap tube is all leaking, stat's also in bad shape. So that's notated and we know it. And uh, let's go ahead and jump over to the other one. Like I said, this was just one of their extra ones that they had sitting around that they were going to use if they needed it, but it's really not worth putting a lot of money into it if you really don't like the table and you're using another one anyway. This one's not in very good shape. <laughs> You see how the aluminum's rotten out. Got a patch here. That's an illegal fix. Yeah, we put it in red tape so it could be easily seen. Not a good idea. Let's see what we got. We got at least somebody soldered on a tap there on that one. 
We're just gonna go ahead and tap on this thing, see if it uh, even runs. It's kind of the first thing I like to do is make sure it runs before we waste too much time on it. Beverage air, and it is nine ounces of 34A. Door seals are okay on this one. Door seals are shot on the other one. Not too bad. We've seen several leaks in that there. Looks like they fixed a leak back in September of 19. Might have had a problem back in 2011. Yeah. Not a whole lot. Four pounds, not impressed. I'll just do the same thing. Um, let's go ahead and plug it in. Make sure it runs first. Looks to me like it runs. Okay, going into a nice negative. So the compressor's okay for now. I'm just jumping right to it. I don't feel like wasting a lot of time on this thing. It's, normally I'll put some refrigerant in it, see if it holds or whatever, or see if it, you know, if I can pick those leaks up. I just don't even feel like wasting a lot of time on it. All right, well, it wouldn't surprise me if it's in the evaporator. It seems to be always where it's leaking at. That's where all the nasties are at. Yeah, I'd say that's where it leaks at. Go into part per million mode. See what we got here. Two hundred and something. Yeah, two thousand, twenty six hundred, thirty five. Let's make sure it's not something we can fix. Yeah, this one's not as easy to get to the true. That sucks. This one's not very easy at all. I think it just pops right off or something. Went ahead and took that apart because I want to see how hard this is going to be to change. That way I can quote it uh, accurately for repairs. So you can kind of see there. There's the coil. So you got two screws there on the right. You got two screws there on the left. We're in manual zero here. This actually works pretty good when it's really, really, really um, saturated like this one is. So we're gonna come into here, it's gonna peg out, hit it, zeroed, come up higher, it's gonna go nuts, zero it, get closer, and then as we come across, it should start going up again. There we go. See if you zero it too quickly, like it looks like I did. There we go. There's the leaky. We've got it uh, pulling down, so while we're doing that, let's go ahead and go look at the uh, ice machine now, see what's going on with it. So it makes ice, it just leaks water, is that correct? was making it. Uh, we had it flat for a while. Flat. On the ground, no, oh, okay. no pallets. Okay. And it wasn't draining well. I don't know if that drain hose. Oh, they just used. We had a small one, and he just used the same cheap hose. Still about five inches below the top of that, so it's not going to drain. I mean, the bin's not, so it's going to fill up on the bin. Yeah. So that's what I thought. We needed to get it up higher. The way this thing works, obviously it's got a cap thing back here. When this water shuts off, which is why this thing's all big like this, all that res reserve water comes down, comes up, causes it to lift, and then sucks it out, and it drains down to the bottom down there. Comes out of that there, 
over to this drain hole. But if you look at it, height-wise, we're higher. This is higher than the machine, which that could always be trimmed down, but he's gonna put another pan underneath of it, and that should probably do that a lot better. And then those little water filters there, these uh, don't last very long, so they may not be able to keep up. I'm just gonna run it yet to see if there's anything else major going on with it. There it goes. We just charged it back up to spec, maybe a half an ounce over or something like that, which we'll probably need to add a little bit to it. Those cap tubes are probably starting to get uh, filled up. Yeah, look at that suction pressure dropping. Yeah, we're going to have to add some in it to get it going. This thing's been running into a uh, negative so much that it's starting to bake the oil. Yeah, it's going to go into a negative. We're going to have to overcharge it if they want to at least get it running so they can operate. But this thing needs a quick operation. I'm going to recommend we dump the oil out of the compressor. I about guarantee it's shot. Yeah, there it goes into a negative. I don't necessarily recommend adding extra like this, but if you want to make it run, there's not a whole lot of options here other than shut it down, but they need to make their food so they can make money, so they can pay you. Uh, you could always give them the option, hey, do you want me to add a little extra to it to get it going? Could damage the unit? Probably won't, because I've seen it done a million times, but you know, these are options you can give them. Otherwise, uh, they're dead in the water and you're probably looking at at least a week before you can get back with the, the uh, coil. Like I always say, put it in their ballpark, let them make the informed decision. Give them all the information and let them make a decision. Don't uh, mandate it like some things in this world. And two extra ounces got us up to 10 pounds, so maybe another little squirt here or two, and we should be up there a little bit. Up there in more of a reasonable level where it'll work. We should hopefully start working here shortly. Let that run for a bit. A little slow. I mean, it's making ice, but you can see how well it does on a harvest. That's where we're going to find out if it's really low or not. It surprised me it's a little bit because it should have been probably froze down by now. It's not real level either. What they did is they just put on a little stand there that made it uh, a little higher. So now it's able to drain. So, oh, look at that. We got a leak. And that's probably the leak they're talking about. I'd say they over tightened that and cracked it. Alright, so what we ended up doing this is hack of the day. We put uh, blue um, thread tape underneath there and re tightened it around it because they was using a barb fitting. Barb fittings don't work real good on that kind of plastic. Really should have a piece of PVC on the back of it with a standoff pipe on the back, just like they've got right here on the back of the throne. And then going down, and you put the tube there on it. Don't want to double trap it like they did here. But with the way this thing's setting in here, um, they're going to move this thing around. They're going to snap off PVC. The water filter, I told them, I said, that's not big enough, so they know that. There's only so much you can do. I don't carry all this crap in my truck to, to rebuild a whole, whole store. All you can do is recommend. Which is really surprising. And pretty much level here this way too. Except for that big bump in the middle. I mean, that don't help a whole lot. Just a touch forward, not much. Not enough to cause a problem. And I did hear it drop. Look at that. Tubes ain't perfect, but the bridge thickness is just a touch too thick, but not bad. Let's uh, let's run some cleaner through this thing since it just dumped. Let's see what goes up, and it should suck it down. Yep, it's sucking it down. Good. 
put this into clean mode. We'll get some nickel safe and run some nickel safe through it. Sagging a little bit over here on this one side, more so than some of the other ones. I'm gonna see if I can raise it in the front. Should be able to crank those up or lower the ones in the back, one or the other. The evaporator and air filter didn't look too bad on it. Let me check those earlier. We're just going to do a fast brush clean because honestly, whoever's been taking care of this has been doing a pretty good job on this. Um, they literally like, tried it out two months ago and it's not really been used for anything. So whoever did whatever to this did a pretty good job keeping it clean. But uh, we're going to kind of just do some basic cleanups here on it and then uh, get her back into run mode. As I'm cleaning it, I notice that this top distributor plate broke. He probably can get away with not having to replace it yet. Um, at the top here, the little prong, it, uh, it was broke. So I stole one out of the machine that we decided not to fix. I had to trim it up a little bit because the original ones have that little lip there. That one there didn't, so I had to cut off about it quarter of an inch, maybe not quite that much, but it's kind of important that distributor gets held in place, otherwise your thickness sensor there is not going to hit the plate accurately, and then you're going to have uh, possibly adjustments out of whack for thickness. So we're just getting this last bit in here, finish cleaning up some things, looks a little bit better. It, uh, for the most part, just got a few more things we got to clean up on it. Okay, we'll drain this thing out. Fills up and it goes back down. All it is is a little cup looking thing, but if you lose it, it's not very easy to find. It's a little hard to make one like that, but you can, I'm sure it can be done. We'll go ahead and get this pulled out and cleaned out because you can see there's a little bit of gunk on that one that needs to be cleaned. Also allows us to get into that uh, pan a little bit better. We're going to trash all this ice. Not a big deal. Put anything in there because there's really not that much ice down there anyway. And we've already done a couple videos on how we scrub a dub. Just check the links up above. Alright, so my switch here is kind of screwed up. It don't will punch in. It works on one side but not the other and it's not even going into a mode now. We may have to jump this and just order him a new switch. What I'm going to try to do, I got the power off. It's unplugged. I'm going to try to pop this thing out and see if I can realign it. If not, we're going to bypass it into the uh, freeze mode only. See, all it is is a roller bearing thing here, which is about wore out and a rocker. The rocker just rocks back and forth. Teeter tots back and forth, common or center conductor. There really ain't a whole lot in there. It's just, I don't know if it's gotten a lot of, I mean, it really ain't that bad looking in there. Everything's pretty clean. In there, that's what's going on. I don't think it's rotating back and forth very well. Okay, we get that oil in there. It's like a ballpoint pen on the end there. If we get that to rotate like it's supposed to. Burp loose. Now we should be able to drop this back into place. Hopefully. A pair of tweezers would be kind of nice. There we go. Look at that. Hold it there for a moment. Wipe off the excess lubricant there. That's all it is is a little little uh, edge piece on there that holds it in place. You want it to pop out. I'll go ahead and put it in there like that. There you go, kids. You definitely want to do this with power off. You notice it's a ground wire here going to the center conductor and it's grounding one or the other. If that wouldn't have worked, what we were going to do is put a little jumper on there and we would have done the center conductor to 
I believe it's the orange one because it kicks to the left. When you go to the left, it pushes it to the right. Jink, jink. There, it's that one to there. It's not perfect, but it's much better than what it was. But the, I'm going to still recommend we replace the switch. We got a red light there. I don't know if it's still in clean mode or not. Let's turn it off. Back to that one. There we go. Two blinks. Just did a dump. Okay, well, it's because it's gone into freeze mode. So, it's going to chill that plate down. Once the plate's chilled, it's going to kick on the pump motor there and then we'll start circulating. That just kicked on. I was able to lubricate that switch up, but I still think it should be replaced. Yeah. That red light on makes me think it wants to go into harvest. So probably having the usual, usual harvest issue thing. It's doing that. But it's definitely one of the kooky things that they've got going on. Probe is there on the left, goes to there. I did splash some water up in there, so. Okay, they're just finished. Should start over now. We got that about adjusted right. We gotta get this cover back on and watch it for a bit before we put that cover on. 